Thank you for sticking around. Please welcome back writer-director Domingo Sotomayor. Um, so this movie takes place in such a specific time period and in such a spe specific place. Where were you drawing inspiration for this movie and why this place in this time period? So thanks for staying. Um, uh, I in the in in 1989 the the dictatorship ends in Chile. Um, that specific year, my parents decide to move to a place that is very similar to the one that is portrayed in the film. So they found this land uh, close to Santiago in the Auskins, and they moved with a, some friends, like 10 families, and they were building their own houses. Uh, in the middle of the nature. At the beginning, we didn't have electricity or phones. Uh, so I, I arrived to this place when I was four years old. Um, I, I ended up spending 20 year, years of my life in this place. So, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, the film is not autobiographical, but it's like personal. It's a lot of fiction, but I think the most personal thing is, is, is the memory of this place and my relationship that it was a very close relationship with, with, with this specific uh, nature. I know by memory all the stones, the, the trees. Like I think it's a film that's coming from this relationship with this place in particular. And yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I love so much about the movie is that it's like does evoke those feelings of memory and nostalgia. How do you as a filmmaker focus on that and then make that the impact of your movie rather than creating like a more aesthetic period piece with those details we'd expect? Like how do you create a film that's a, that evokes the feeling of memory? I was just connected with my own memories. I think I had a very bad memory. Is something that moves me to make films. So, yeah, rather than thinking in a big story, it was like it was. I, there was some images that kept like invading me, and it was the starting point for the project. It is specific memories of my childhood that I didn't wanted to forget. And when I was writing, I was already thinking in some images, so I cannot separate like. Um, I don't know, the place, the architecture, the, the land with the story. Um, and I was also moved to make a film that is about adolescence of these kids, of these people, like going from one stage of their life to another one, and all what that means, like all this hope of a new beginning, but also all this pain of the but all that you have to learn to lose to, uh, growing up, all this kind of ex strange nostalgia of growing up. But also the context in Chile was, was, was the arriving of democracy, that it was like another adolescence, like a country that thought that democracy will, will, will be a solution, or will be like a new stage. And there was a lot of pain, so it's like the adolescence of Chile and the adolescence of the characters. And I was trying to, to yeah, and, to it. And um, this film in your first feature focuses on, primarily on the children's perspective, and you work so amazingly with children. It's always amazing the performances you get out of them. Can you talk about how you cast your films and then how you maybe get that naturalism out of their young cast? So I, I don't like to make traditional casting for kids. So in both films I work with my mother, she's an actress. She's still working, she's still living in this community. So we make like a really untraditional casting. We, we were just looking for kids that we knew they could be like 
into the film or they, they like to be in a film and we make a little workshop and so we invite them to my house or the house of my mother to play instruments or to make some games for a weekend and among the group there were like 10 first 10 little kids and then 10 teenagers we so I was observing them and then I decide who will be the main characters and the other ones were all invited to the film. So they could not not be selected. So that was nice. So I think I think the shooting was like a prolongation, you say, like a a continuation of the of this workshop. And yeah, I had this rule to don't work with any kid that makes some films or something before. I wanted to work with kids. Uh, working for the first time in a film. Um, what else? I don't know. I, I really think you you cannot create create complexity. I was just looking for kids that were complex and were interesting. They are all all the kids are interesting, but they were like I could feel that they feel older than they are, and they were like in kind of a turmoil, personal turmoil. And I was just observing that and not making act. It was more like making them being themselves, like connect with their own emotions in the context of my story, but being as them as they are, like as close as, as they are. And the way you shoot your films are always so interesting because they're they're observational, but they're more like you're making us part of the group, where we're not looking through a screen, we're sort of hanging out with them, um, and that allows us to get closer to them. Can you talk about your conversations with your DPs and how you achieve that, that style and that look? Yeah, um, I don't know, it was a really free film. I wanted to, I'm always full of rules of myself. My first film is really like a strict, and in this case, I wanted the film to be as free as the what, as the life I was trying to portray, with all these digressions. So while I was writing, I already had some ideas of like how I wanted to to, to shoot some scenes. But then with Inti Briones, the DOP, we were always very open of what the rehearsals he was. So all these, because there were like 40 characters in some of scenes, it was more like, okay, this scene will be like, I don't know, follow. So we make like a free rehearsal and then we, we move the camera. So I think it, it was a combination of this more strict, uh, I don't know. For example, I always wanted to come back to the same uh, framing some scenes but then there are all other ones with more characters that they were more free but the inspirations were photos of the 90s of the community and also I found these DHS tapes of a real forest fire that happened when I was little that was also the starting point of the writing and these VHS tapes sh shows the real forest fire and there was a neighbor recording that they did of the fire. That is very absurd. So everybody was trying to keep the fire off and this neighbor, this Brazilian neighbor, she was just recording. And I find it very special. And also there is all this, there is a scene in that record that is in the film with this woman with trees trying to, to I, I just found it fascinating how this little group of humans are trying to go against the nature so I'm thinking it's interesting for me this group of people hoping to be far away of the dangers of the city or the dictatorship of all this gray city but they're instead uh, Threatening but nature. So it was also like, but I, I, I went far from your question, but I uh, know. So <laughs> the inspiration of, of the VHS tapes were also like, she was recording in a very random way. So she was like this. And I like, I like to capture something of 
that, that sometimes the camera is not in the right place. It's just like making the out of frame so, so important. Uh, we have time for a couple of quick questions. Does anybody have questions? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> I love the film, that was great. I'm glad you like it. Thanks. I don't know, I don't want to. When I'm writing, I'm not thinking in metaphors or thinking in a specific meaning that I wanted to give to the audience. I'm more like connecting things that interest me. So now, like, Maybe one year ago I can watch the film and I'm, even I seeing like connections or like different meanings. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want to give like a super close answer because it's, I think it's a film that you complete and it's, if you read it that way, it's great. But yes, I think it's a film about contrast, about water, about fire. And I want, I think the fire is for me now, actually later, it's like a visual thing, it's the more visual thing, like forest fire. Now it's really, I'm really sorry about what is happening here. You know, so, yeah. yeah, but it's like a more graphic image of a violent transformation. So all the film is about transformation and then the fire make it visual, I think, makes the distraction very concrete. Um, all the what you say makes a lot of sense to me as you know, the character. I have one more question we have time for. Does anybody have a question? How did how did the creation of the story or the process of creating the story affect your own perception of your adolescence? <laughs> I know, very personal question. I was always afraid of making a film that will be very critical of my childhood because I I love the place, I love the people and I was afraid it would be like, okay, you are portraying these hippie parents and then you destroy everything with a fire and it's like, I don't know, I didn't want it to be that obvious or t that tough. And, and I think making the film, I, I, I kind of uh, realized that I that I love the contrast where I grew up because in a way it was fascinating to live in this community. It was it was so inspiring to grow up with other artists or uh, with all these people. I like the the relationship with the nature, how simple was the life there. But at the same time, we were forced to grow up a little bit too fast, and we were exposed to to our parents, like mistakes, etc. So I don't know if I'm replying your question, but in the process, I realized that um, it's more like like it's not that I wanted to make a critic. It's that I understand that this this is me. I'm the, I'm like I am because of these contradictions that I had also in my childhood. That's unfortunately all the time we have, but thank you so much for <laughs> thank you. Here, here,
thank you for staying. Don't forget to set a vote for the audience award.